Welcome to Your City at Work, your program about local government departments and services. Your City at Work is a production of the City of Oshkosh and Oshkosh Community Media Services. and thank you for joining us for Your City at Work. As you know, this program is all about checking out what different departments in the city have been up to and different projects they've been working on. And today we've devoted the entire show to one specific project. Um, it's begun, it began almost a year ago and it concluded in August and it was located right here at City Hall. If you haven't already guessed what it was, I'm talking about the underground stormwater detention system. And for the next half hour, we're gonna dive into the details of this exciting project as well as what's next in the stormwater utility efforts. So in the studio today, we have James Robbie, our stormwater engineer, engineer for the city of Oshkosh. So thank you so much for joining us today, James. Thank you, Emily. So first off, can you just give us a little bit of background education on stormwater in general? What exactly is stormwater and why is it so important? Well, you know, stormwater is, you know, the runoff that comes off the ground anytime it rains or snow melts or anything like that. So it's really the water that runs off and doesn't soak into the ground. and. You know, anyone who has been around the city of Oshkosh for you know more than a couple of years is pretty well aware of some of the uh, troubles that we've had with stormwater and flooding events in um, recent history in particular um, over the last 10 years. We've had a number of rather severe flooding events. So you know, managing that stormwater is, is really important to uh, try and uh, minimize damage and minimize the impacts to um, all of our businesses and residents. And I think it's something a lot of people don't really think about until there's a flood, that all this water, it's got to go somewhere. And when there's so many, you know, paving and that kind of thing, it doesn't get a chance to get down into the ground so well. Right. And anytime you cover the ground with a hard surface, whether it be a pavement or a roof, you know, you're eliminating the ability for water to infiltrate over that area. So you increase the amount of water that runs off. And you're right, when it's, you know, dry and in the middle of August and we haven't seen rain for three weeks, you know, everybody kind of forgets that, hey, you know, we're only one big thunderstorm away from, you know, another flooding event that we uh, need to be worried about. So, you know, our duty, if you will, when the stormwater utility is to continually think about those things even when, you know, everybody else has maybe kind of forgotten about them. Mm -hmm. And solutions to these problems um, range from a few different things, different ponds, as well as detention systems underground like the one we're about to talk about. Yeah, it's, um, you know, anytime we're doing an analysis in, in a watershed as a whole, we look at um, what strategies are going to make the most sense for that particular watershed. Um, as uh, people will remember back in 2009, 2010, uh, we were doing a lot of work over in the Melvin Avenue area and we were looking at options for doing a surface detention basin or you know, a large pump station and we ended up proceeding with the construction of the large pump station in that particular watershed. Um, you know, that's not the correct solution for every watershed, but in that particular watershed, it was the correct solution. Um, you know, as we come into uh, the City Hall area, the Division Street watershed, um, you know, again, we've got a very unique set of circumstances, um, you know, in that we discharge down to the river, but there's very significant grade elevation change coming up towards City Hall, so the system gets very deep very quickly. and you know, it, it creates some challenges in what strategies are available to us. Okay, so let's just uh, dive into this huge project that uh, took place here at City Hall. I know you said it's located within the Division Street watershed. So can you give us a little bit of uh, an overview of the project when it started planning and everything? Yeah, we, we started the initial planning and analysis of the Division Street watershed back in 2009. And for those that aren't aware, the Division Street watershed is roughly bounded by Jackson Street and Main Street from the Fox River north to New York Avenue. Um, and back in 2009, 2010, 2011, we were doing some street reconstruction projects in the upper portions of the watershed. Central, Prospect, Merrill, um, Saratoga, up near uh, Merrill Middle School, we were doing a lot of work. Um, and that kind of prompted the analysis of the watershed to try and see, okay, what do we need to do for storm sewer sizing with this street reconstruction project? 
And as a part of that, you know, historically we have experienced a lot of flooding down in the lower end of the watershed, down by the Chamber of Commerce building. Um, Jackson Street routinely, you know, floods out during moderate to heavy rain events. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that watershed wide planning analysis really looks at, okay, not only what do we need for storm sewer in those upper areas, but what do we need to do to manage this watershed as a whole? Okay, so when exactly did construction on the underground stormwater detention system begin? Uh, the underground system itself, uh, we broke ground on that project on March 4th of 2013. And uh, the underground system itself, the construction of that was completed in August. Uh, the remainder of the parking lot project uh, was completed in uh, late October. Okay, and so what exactly are the goals in having this brand new detention system? Well, the, uh, the goals of all of our watershed analyses are really the same. You know, one, we try to make sure for you know, what we refer to as a 10-year design storm or a storm that has a 10% chance of happening in any given year, we try to make sure that the water is off the street. As we start getting into those larger storm events, you know, the 25-year, the 100-year design storm or the 4% or 1% chance in any one given year, and you know, we start looking at trying to contain any kind of street flooding within the right of way. So for a, a 4% storm, a 25 year storm, we're really trying to say, okay, let's keep the street passable. You know, maybe the gutter lines are underwater, but you can drive down the middle of the street. Mm -hmm. And what that really does is that enables emergency crews to still be able to easily traverse the streets. Um, during those major storm events, we're just trying to contain the, the flooding within the right of way. Um, yes, it has an impact to accessibility throughout the city, um, but by containing it within the right of way, we're not impacting those private properties. Okay, and so this particular detention system, where is, I mean, what areas are going to be leading down into that, that storm detention system? Um, areas that, um, any runoff that is generated from New York Avenue south to Irving between Jackson and Maine will all come into this underground system as well as everything west of Central, between Central and Jackson. So the main storm sewer comes down Division Street and then it's gonna come down Central Street and feed into uh, this underground system that we constructed out in the parking lot. Great, and this project, as anyone can see, was by no means at all small. Um, so if we want to maybe get in a little bit to the cost of the project, can you tell us maybe how, how much total it cost and where exactly the money came from? Sure. The, uh, the project as a whole, the overall construction cost uh, with engineering was approximately $4.3 million. Um, the large portion of that, about $3.2 million of that, was stormwater utility funded. So that related to the construction of the underground detention system itself and um, restoration of any areas uh, associated with that. The actual underground system itself was about $2.3 million just for the construction of that. So, you know, that was the significant portion of, of the cost. Uh, the remainder of the funding, uh, the, the remainder of the parking lot reconstruction project, um, just under a million dollars, was funded by property improvements from the general fund. And we also had a $150,000 DNR grant that uh, provided some funding for the project as well. Excellent. Um, and so now that the project is complete and finished, uh, what's going to change as a result of having this, this system? Um, I know we had a side-by-side -side comparison of what a 25-year and 100-year storm would look like. If you want to kind of explain that a little bit to us? Yeah, if, if um, you know, as the graphics come up here on the screen, you can see, you know, kind of the existing conditions is prior to implementation of anything in the in the watershed and the proposed conditions is after construction of the underground system and after construction of a big storm sewer project that's going to take place in 2014. So for the 25-year design storm event that we see on the screen now uh, that equates to about 1.6 inches of rain in half an hour. Mm -hmm. So that is a very short but very intense rainfall and the big issue there is because that storm is so intense, just, you know, you need large storm sewer capacity to be able to get it off the street. And then that underground system is what really protects the, uh, the downstream areas down by the chamber building in particular. Mm -hmm. um, if you noticed on, on the graphic, there was a lot of red and orange uh, coloring in the existing conditions. You know, that's indicating flooding depths of anywhere between 6 and 12 to 15 inches on the street in those areas. Um, and just looking at the proposed side of it too, you can just see a huge improvement. Right, you can, um, and really, you know, like I said, that's a combination of the storm sewer improvements and 
the uh, the big detention system um, yeah. under the parking lot. And now we have the hundred year one up too. And again, you can see in the in the proposed conditions, you know, you still see some green uh, green shading showing up. You know, that green shading is street flooding in the zero to three inch range. Okay. You know, as compared to you know the reds and oranges that are you know six, twelve, fifteen, sometimes even up to eighteen inches in depth. So that is a very major storm. You know, that's almost two point four inches of rain in that same thirty minute time frame. Wow. Okay. Um, you know, and we've reduced those flooding depths down near the chamber building from between 12 and 18 inches to about three inches. Um, and the duration is significantly reduced as well. Okay. So, you know, it's, it doesn't completely eliminate it in that major storm event. But again, you know, if you remember back to our goals, we're not trying to completely eliminate it in those major events. We're just trying to contain it in the street and uh, reduce the impacts as much as possible in the street. Right, so we should see a difference, um, you know, within these big rainstorms from one to the next of how well the storm water is draining out. <laughs> yeah, it, it really does. Um, you know, the detention system holds and re releases over a longer period of time. So that reduces the duration of flooding downstream and the storm sewers upstream get it off the street a lot quicker. Great, um, so we're gonna take a look at more of the details of how exactly it works. Um, after the break, but first let's talk a little bit about uh, what's next in the stormwater efforts here. Um, I understand we have Central Street, uh, the Central Street Reconstruction Project coming up. Yeah, the uh, Central Street Reconstruction will start right at Church Avenue and go north all the way to Irving Avenue. Um, as a part of the storm sewer work in that area, we're going to be going down Irving to Division Street. Uh, because the main storm sewer right now is in Division Street. So we're trying to pick up that big storm sewer in Division and get it routed into the underground system so it becomes fully online once that storm sewer is constructed. Okay. So the big impacts we're not going to see until after we complete next year's construction projects. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things that you can't fix everything all in one year. You know, you got to kind of look at timing and spacing out of projects and um, it really was uh, very logical for us to do the big underground system this year and then move into the street reconstruction project next year. Mm -hmm. Especially in terms of cost, I can imagine. It's a lot to have these big projects like this, one right after the other like that. It really is. Um, you know, that's, that's a big thing of everything that we look at is, you know, what are our capital costs and trying to spread those out as much as possible. And honestly, another big consideration that we looked at in choosing 2013 for the uh, construction of the underground is the disruption that it would have to City Hall and the safety building. Um, being an odd year, as it were, uh, there was a very minimal amount of election work taking place, mm -hmm. whereas in 2014 or even you know in 2016 being a presidential election year, there's a lot more election work taking place. So there's a lot more people trying to come and go to City Hall. So being an odd year in 2013, it was able, we were able to minimize some of the impacts to everything else that goes on in the city. Because, you know, as, as you were well aware, you know, there was uh, some very significant parking restrictions uh, during the construction of the project. Mm -hmm. um, we did have to relocate almost all staff off-site. Um, several of our neighbors were very gracious enough to allow us uh, to park in their parking lots. Um, the First Presbyterian Church, the uh, Lutheran Church across the street from City Hall, and Most Blessed Sacrament uh, were all gracious enough to allow us to utilize their parking spaces. Um, and that really did help cut down on the distance that um, you know, we had to uh, walk once we got to work. Uh, but it allowed us to keep more space open for visitors uh, coming mm -hmm. to City Hall. You know, people coming to pick up building permits, coming to pay their water bills. Um, you know, we really did need to try and keep those parking spaces open for people trying to do business at the two buildings. Yes, it's a really important area to have to sacrifice for such a long time, but looking out at the parking lot now, it's so worth it. It's a beautiful new lot and everybody's using it right now. It, it really is. And I think, you know, one of the things that, um, you know, watching it, you know, from start to finish, I think one of the big um, features that you'll notice now is the parking lots between the city hall and the safety building are now combined into one large functional lot. Um, you know, anybody who uh, used to come to City Hall before, you know, if you pulled in one driveway and you couldn't find a parking spot, you had to go back out on the street and pull in a different driveway. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't have that now. The lot is one large uniform lot. Once you're in the lot, you can maneuver around the entire parking lot to uh, try to find a place to park. So you're not continually going back out on the street. So it, that's a big safety improvement as well because, 
you know, anytime you're trying to pull on and off a street, there's a potential for uh, vehicular accidents. And you know, you're crossing sidewalks too, and you know, people don't always pay attention to the pedestrians on the sidewalk. So it, it's a big safety improvement for the mm -hmm. site as well. That and a convenience factor too. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we have a couple minutes before the break. If we want to maybe back up a little bit and talk about uh, a lot of decisions being made with stormwater utility. And I understand there is a committee that um, is behind a lot of these decisions. Do you want to describe that committee a little bit for me? Yeah, actually uh, the stormwater utility committee is five um, residential members at large. Um, you know, nominations come through the mayor's office. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the committee is really instrumental in helping staff in reviewing a lot of the alternatives analyses that we go through. Um, you know, any particular project, you know, let's take the Division Street project, for example. You know, we analyzed between 15 and 20 different alternatives before we settled upon the construction of an underground system. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as we, as staff, as we narrowed it down to a, a couple of alternatives, you know, that's, you know, when we really start discussing it a lot more in depth with that committee and um, getting their thoughts on the various alternatives that we're looking at and, you know, the pros and cons of each of them. And, um, you know, it's discussion with them and getting, you know, their point of view as, um, you know, kind of a neutral outsider, if you will. Because as staff, you know, we're living and breathing this stuff on a daily basis. It's um, the role of the committee and where they help us tremendously is kind of giving us that outside look of, well, you know, he, here's how we see it from, you know, an outsider, or a general public point of view. Mm -hmm. More of the community involvement getting in there. Right, it, it really is. And it, it's uh, kind of a sounding gr uh, board, if you will, uh, before we start moving into uh, public informational meetings and things on how we're going to proceed is, you know, that committee is a, a big important part of, of staff reviewing and getting those final alternatives to recommend. Okay, and how often does the committee meet? Uh, the committee meets roughly monthly. Um, you know, we don't have a set schedule, you know, like the plan commission is, you know, mm -hmm. first and third Tuesday of every month. We don't have a set schedule like that. Um, we generally will schedule two to three meetings out um, because it really does depend on the committee members' availability. Um, you know, these committee members have jobs outside of the committee. Um, one of them is a university professor, you know, so she has got to be very conscious of what her university class schedule is. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's one of the things that we have to uh, be a little more flexible in our scheduling. Excellent. And all the agendas and minutes are available online. Um, where can people go to find those, as well as information about stormwater utility in general? Um, <clears throat> if you go to the, the city's main webpage, um, under the banner, there's departments. Mm -hmm. Go to Public Works and click on Stormwater Utility. Um, everything that the Stormwater Utility's got going on is shown on that page and you can also access the agendas and minutes uh, from that page as well. Yes, and you're also able to call Public Works if you have any questions at uh, 236-5065? That is correct. Okay. Uh, well, I think we're going to take a short break now and when we come back we'll talk a little bit more about the finished product project itself. Uh, you're watching Your City at Work on City Cable 10.
Thank you again for joining us on Your City at Work. And now what you just saw was a time-lapse video of the whole entire project uh, created by Oshkosh Community Media Services. Uh, we had a camera up on the top of City Hall and we were able to get a view of the whole entire project start to finish. So that's something that is useful that you were just saying in a lot of your presentations you've been doing, James. Yeah, and you know, I think you know, one of the big things that also helped with um, is utilizing that camera, we were able to set up a live web feed of the project mm -hmm. um, throughout the construction. And um, you know, again, I want to give a big thank you both to Media Services, but also to Information Technology for uh, you know the two divisions working together to kind of make that work. Um, I know it was a little bit of a challenge because uh, you know the video equipment uh, that you work with is not necessarily set up for a live web feed, and um, IT did manage to uh, pull that off for us, and it was a very useful tool throughout the course of the construction it's a project. huge asset too to even people in the community even if um, something happened that there was something covering the lens or maybe a spider or some something happened that it went down we would always get phone calls people were <laughs> always watching it checking up on how the project's going so it was a cool thing to have. Yeah it was it was very uh, very neat and a uh, very interesting uh, opportunity to take advantage of and you know it's something we don't normally get but with a project like this located right here at City Hall uh, we were able to, uh, you know, utilize all of the divisions of City Hall to uh, to make something like that come together. And you're right, I think, you know, the community as a whole, um, it was very beneficial for. Definitely. So let's talk about the finished product, project. Uh, when you get out onto the parking lot, if you're parking or walking, directly underneath you is this huge stormwater detention system. How much water can this giant basin hold? Um, the detention system itself holds approximately two million gallons of water. Um, for those in the uh, industry, it's about six acre feet, or wow. you know, if you would spread out one acre, it would be six feet deep. But yeah, it's about two million gallons of water the system will hold. It's amazing. And how how deep is the actual basin? Go. Uh, the the tank itself is about twelve feet tall, okay. but there's about five to six feet of uh, earth and fill over the top of it. Uh, so the bottom of the tank itself is approximately 20 feet below the parking lot surface as you're standing on it. Okay, and those are some cool pictures that we just showed too of the actual inside of the project, something that a lot of people probably will never be able to see. So Yeah, it's, um, you know, right before we opened up the parking lot, um, the structural design engineer and myself uh, went down in for a final inspection, if you will, and uh, those photographs were taken while we were in there on that final inspection. Okay, and now will it ever look like this again, or will there always be water inside of there now? Uh, there is an area in the center that will always have water, about three feet of depth. Okay. Um, that extends down below that 20 feet. So, you know, the area at about 20 feet will generally always be dry. Um, being down in an enclosed environment, you know, it will always be humid and, you mm -hmm. know, a little damp and everything down there, but it will generally not have water standing in it at all times, other than in that center area. Okay, so then what exactly are the layers of this basin? I know we have another graphic with um, what's exactly made up of it, how much space is between the top of the lot from the beginning of the basin. Yeah, if we would kind of start at the parking lot and um, work our way down, you know, you've got the asphalt surface right on top, and then beneath that you've got a, you know, a stone base that really supports that asphalt surface. And beneath that is the backfill material. In this case, the contractor utilized sand as a backfill. So there's uh, between four and five feet of sand over the top of the tank. Okay. And then you get to the actual roof of the tank itself. And then as you continue down, you're obviously you know, in the opening of the tank. Uh, the roof beams are supported by a, a grid pattern of columns inside, which you can see very clearly in those photographs. Uh, and then you get down to the base slab of the tank. Uh, the base slab itself is about two feet thick of concrete that was all cast in place. Uh, so there's a lot of concrete and steel reinforcing inside of that uh, base slab, but the slab itself is about two feet thick. Wow, Be very solid project there. Yeah, it's, <laughs> um, I, I believe uh, the, uh, the grand total was somewhere around 8,000 tons of concrete that went wow. into uh, building the tank itself. That's really amazing. Um, and there are different, a few different ways that water gets down into this basin. Um, from the surface. Uh, can you describe some of those? Yeah, actually the um, the catch basins in the parking lot are all connected into uh, the underground detention system. Mm -hmm. And one of the other things that you'll notice as you're walking around in the parking lot is there are several open grate, round open grate castings in the parking lot. Those are less to let water in so much as they are to let air out. Mm -hmm. um, the underground system has a five foot high by eight foot wide box culvert feeding water into it and it's got a 24 inch pipe letting water out of it. 
So once that 24 inch pipe is submerged, there's nowhere for the air to go that's in that system. Mm -hmm. uh, so as a part of the design, you know, we were very conscious of trying to make sure there's a way for that air to escape so the tank can fill and do its job. And that's what all those open grate, uh, round open grates are in the parking lot is actually air escaping out of the system during a big storm event. Okay, and also um, there are little islands throughout the parking lot um, that actually have a purpose as well. Yeah, actually when, when you get over on to the western side of the parking lot between uh, City Hall and the safety building, there are depressed landscape islands, um, more commonly referred to as a biofilter. Mm -hmm. It's actually a stormwater treatment practice. So as the water runs off of the parking lot, it picks up pollutants, dirt, brake dust, all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Um, when it enters that biofilter, it's constructed out of a, a, a sandy, topsoily material. So that material will actually filter those pollutants and trap those pollutants. And then the, new, the plants that are, will be planted in those biofilters next year will actually use the nutrients as well and tie those up so that we're reducing the overall pollution that is discharging downstream to the Fox River. Excellent. And going back to those round, uh, great things on the parking lot that you were talking about. You were telling us earlier actually how air is escaping and right now you can even see it with the temperature cooling down. You can see different steam coming out of there. Yeah, right now, you know, with the air temperature at about, you know, 15 to 20 degrees in the mornings when we come in and the air temperature down in this tank system itself is probably still around 40 to 50 degrees. Mm -hmm. So you've got a very warm air underneath there that is actually escaping out through those access points. And you know, yeah, in the early mornings, you can see what, you know, appears to be a steam escaping uh, from those access points. And you know, a couple of them you can see, you know, there's some frosting of the grass and everything adjacent to them. And that's just warm, damp air escaping out of them and then hitting the cold air outside and freezing on the grass. Okay, uh, we got a few minutes left and we've got some commonly asked questions that people might uh, think about when they think of the new stormwater detention basin. Um, first one, is there any concern of it collapsing? I mean, people are driving on here, you got trucks and whatever else. Do we ever need to worry about something happening where it might crack? Um, no, the uh, the structural design of the system, you know, really does take into account, you know, the different types of traffic loading. When we designed the system, we knew that we occasionally get semi deliveries. So our structural design engineer took that kind of loading into account. And as you can see from the graphic, you know, he's got some information displayed on there about what that means to the the system itself. And you know, long term, we will be doing periodic inspections of this system. Um, that center sump area that's always wet will accumulate sediment over time. We'll have to go in and clean that out. Mm -hmm. So in addition to cleanings, we'll be doing periodic inspections to um, you know, look for any potential issues before it becomes a catastrophe. Excellent. And it looks like we're just about out of time. So if people do have more questions, where can they go again? Uh, they can visit the Stormwater Utilities webpage or give the Department of Public Works a call. All right. Well, thanks again so much for joining us today, James, and educating us on this project and what's to come in the future for it. Thank you, Emily. Again, to learn more about the project we talked about in today's episode, you can go to our website, ci.oshkosh.wi.us, under the Public Works Department and find the Stormwater Utility page. You can also call the Public Works Department at 236-5065. So that's going to conclude our episode of Your City at Work. Don't forget to tune in to City Cable 10 for replays of your favorite programs as well as government meetings. You can also go online at oshkoshcommunitymedia.org to view them on demand. Like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter for city and programming updates. Or you can even check out our Pinterest page for the latest snapshots of what's going on around the city. Thank you again for joining us on Your City at Work and we'll see you next time.